video, let us look at this epiphora. Okay. So basically, epiphora is outflow of normally secreted tears. Here, the amount of tears is normal. Okay. But still, there is overflow of these tears. Understand that. Okay. So here, there is no excessive lacrimation. The amount of lacrimation is perfect, but still there is outflow of the tears because of some problem with the drainage, some blockage in the flow of normally formed tears, right? So basically here, you know, there is the lacrimal gland or the tear gland, which is secreting the tears, right? Now these tears, what they do via the puncta, canaliculi, lacrimal sac and the mesolacrimal duct, they get this drainage. There's a drainage here for the tears. So normal secretions, whatever are there, they are normally drained. You wouldn't even know. They are just trying to maintain this uh, uh, moisture of the eye, right? So they will be working normally. However, whenever there is a block to the outflow, there is a block. Guys, if there is a block to the outflow and if there is uh, outflow like this, then it is called as epiphora. What are we discussing today? Epiphora, right? So basically here the secretion part is perfectly fine. There is no excess secretion. There is no hyper lacrimation. The person is not emotional and crying and he's not producing excessive tears. He's absolutely fine emotional state. He's not secreting more. Still there is outflow, right? That is called as epiphora. Here we are discussing what epiphora. Watery eye can be because of two things. A watery eye can be because of excessive secretion or it can be because of this blockage, that blockage, whenever there is a blockage in the drainage and there is watering of eye, that is called as epiphora. Okay. So, let us go back here to the beginning. So, we are telling outflow of normally secreted tears. So, here this normal, tears are absolutely normal secreted due to blockage, right, in the drainage. So that is what is important here. The person is absolutely happy, guys, but they will look like they are crying. Okay. Now, let us move on to the causes of this epiphora. There is a lot of conditions, like, right? You will see epiphora as a symptom. Like, there are a lot of symptoms, a lot of uh, specific things you will see in an ophthalmology book, right? For each of these, the clinical features will come as epiphora. Okay. So let us see exactly why epiphora happens. So guys, the causes can be physiological or mechanical. So mechanical obstruction is very easy to understand. <clears throat> so if you know the anatomy of the eye, basically the obstruction can be at the puncta, at the canaliculi, at the lacrimal sac or the nasolacrimal duct. This much is very easy to understand, right? So you can understand here, we already told you there could be a problem with the Puncta, this is the puncta here, this is the puncta, these two lines are the canaliculi, there could be problem with the canaliculi or there could be problem with the lacrimal sac or here there could be problem with the nasolacrimal duct, correct right? So in with these parts there can be problem, so that much you can understand. So when will you see some punctal causes, old age, okay, there can be chronic conjunctivitis, chronic blepharitis, okay, lot of uh, things that uh, cause uh, ectropion, okay. Now you will ask what is ectropion, right? So basically age, laxity of lids, chronic conjunctivitis, chronic blepharitis, ectropion. Ectropion is the eyelid, right? Eyelid will have issue. So the eyelid is turning outward. So this is ectropion. So all these can be the punctal causes to epiphora. What is epiphora? Watering of the eye due to blockage in the outflow. So this is aversion of the puncta. This is aversion of puncta. Okay, so these are the reasons that it can happen. Then you can have obstruction of the puncta. Punctal obstruction. So, punctal obstruction, there may be congenital absence of puncta, okay, cicatricial closure, that is healing, right, cicatricial healing closure following injuries, burns, infections, right. So, basically congenital absence of what? There could be congenital absence of, congenital absence of puncta itself won't be there or these puncta will be get blocked because of 
some injuries, burns, infections. So infections, remember infections. So you know so many infections, right, of the eye. So because of these infections, the pangta can get closed, okay. Sometimes there can be foreign body also, which can close it, right. Foreign body, very rarely they are saying. Concretion of or cilia may also block. So concretion and all you have seen in uh, some conditions, they are a complication, right. Concretions, cilia itself may block the punctum, okay. Some drugs, if people are using long time, some drugs like drugs like what? These drugs are like this, guys. Look at the names. Where are the names? I do. I do. Zuridine and pilocarpine. So pilocarpine, I do. Zuridine. These can cause closure of the puncta. Okay. Prolonged use of these drugs. Fine. So these, actually these drugs are associated with punctal stenosis. So these can lead to punctal stenosis, okay. This idozuridin is actually an anti-herpes virus, antiviral drug it is, okay. So it is given against herpes and pilocarpine, you know it is a meiotic, it will be used to treat angle closure, glaucoma, etc. So what will they lead to? They will lead to punctal stenosis. So now we have covered the causes for uh, epiphora. Because of puncta, what will happen? Puncta can congenitally be absent. There can be punctal stenosis due to drugs, some infections, some burns, some injuries will block this puncta, right? Then what else? You saw that aversion of puncta can happen in chronic conjunctivitis, chronic blepharitis, ectropion, where the eyelid turns outside, right? So we have looked at so many causes of epiphora in puncta. Similarly, we have to look at canaliculi, we have to look at lacrimal sac, we have to look at nasolacrimal duct, right? We have to look at these three. Still, we haven't looked at physiological also. So, let's come and look at uh, canaliculi now, okay? Take a break and uh, let's continue with uh, canaliculi. Okay. Luckily, canaliculi is not that difficult, guys. Canaliculi basically, again, obstruction, congenital, acquired, foreign body, trauma, Idiopathic fibrosis, canaliculitis, okay. So what and all you want to write here? Foreign body, congenital. First of all, obstruction in uh, canaliculi. Canaliculi obstruction. So canalicular, you can say canalicular obstruction, congenital, acquired. Acquired will be like foreign body. Same thing, trauma. Fibrosis, some idiopathic fibrosis they are saying. Idiopathic fibrosis, then they are saying canaliculitis, right? Canaliculitis, common causes actinomyces, that is bacteria, right? Actinomyces, a special type of bacteria, okay? So we are done with canalicular obstruction. So now we are done with what? Canalicular obstruction. You know what the canaliculi are, right? If you don't know that only, it will become difficult. This is canaliculi. Okay, canalicular obstruction, which will cause what? Epiphora. Good. Now we are moving on to the other causes. So now we are moving to lacrimal sac, guys. Let's move on to lacrimal sac. Now, lacrimal sac, how do you think it will get obstructed? So, because of some congenital, again, congenital, some folds, some mucosal folds will be there which will block, let's say, okay, congenital mucous membrane folds, okay. What else do you think can happen? Infections. Infections like what? Tuberculosis, syphilis, always you have seen in uh, Dacryocystitis, you have heard of all these terms already, right? Then dacryolithiasis, they can be stones. Wow, in this uh, uh, lacrimal uh, sac, dacryolithiasis, tumors in the lacrimal sac that can cause obstruction and hence epiphora. Okay, guys, so now let us move on to nasolacrimal duct. Are you ready? So nasolacrimal duct, guys, so basically nasolacrimal duct, you know where it is, right? Or you want us to go back and tell you the anatomy every time. So this is the nasolacrimal duct here, right? There'll be a valve of what here, Hassan here. So basically, the, some problem here that will cause the tears to have a good flow, okay? So epiphora. 
So now let us move on to lacrimal, sorry, nasolacrimal duct. So again here congenital lesions, congenital lesions. So same thing you are writing, congenital, congenital. So there can be non-canalization, non-canalization, right? Partial canalization or imperforated, that again, imperforated membranous valves, some problem with the valves here. Then acquired causes of nasolacrimal duct obstruction. What do you think will be the acquired causes of this? Acquired causes. So acquired, acquired causes can be what guys? Trauma, right? Traumatic strictures they are saying here. Again, inflammatory strictures. Right? Are you able to see inflammatory strictures? Then what is? Stenosis, idiopathic stenosis. Then diseases. And then tumors. So guys, this is pretty standard stuff only they are writing every time. Okay. So you have understood. Right? The causes. So actually there are some physiological causes that we didn't cover here. Physiological causes. Let us look at them now. Mechanical is pretty easy to understand. Physiological is like the lacrimal pump will fail because the lower lid laxity or weakness of orbicularis muscle. So this is normal they are saying. Lower lid laxity, weakness of orbicularis muscle. This is physiological, right? Which can cause the failure of the pump. Failure of pump because of these. Okay. So guys, this is physiological. That means it is, it's okay. Okay. And um, you could read more about this, but here if it is physiological, it does happen at times, okay? More information on that needs to be collected, guys. So if basically they want to check on uh, the lacrimal apparatus, right? They can uh, check the lacrimal sac area for redness, swelling, for fistula, right? You can inspect the lacrimal puncta. So they can check the puncta for any aversion, stenosis, right? For any absence of the puncta itself, any discharge is there, some regurgitation test. So they will put pressure here, they will press the lacrimal sac area and they will see if there is any discharge from the puncta, right? All these are some tests that they do. Then what else they do? They will do some syringing, lacrimal syringing is done, right? To uh, see where exactly the blockage is and there are a lot of other tests like Jones dye test, right? So many things are there, dacryocystography should have heard of all that, right? So that was about epiphora, guys. Quick, quick recap. What is epiphora? Outflow of normal tears due to blockage in drainage of the tears. We saw the lacrimal apparatus. We saw the definition of epiphora. The causes of epiphora can be physiological, mechanical obstruction. We saw punctal causes, canalicular obstruction, lacrimal sac obstruction, nasolacrimal duct obstruction. Then we saw... That's all. That's all we saw in this video. That's great. So we will meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.